We've got here a comparison between the RX 6800, the RTX 3070, and the RTX 3060 Ti. However, before we get into today's video, I understand you guys in the comments. A lot of you guys are saying, look, Brian, these cards are sold out. We can't get our hands on them, but you guys as reviewers, you're getting these cards, you're flashing them around on YouTube, and we really want to get our hands on one. So what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be part of the solution. I'm going to be giving away this RX 6800 to one of you guys in the audience. And all you have to do to enter is drop a comment, hit that like button and be subscribed. And so how I'm going to draw it is on Twitter, where I'm going to select a random winner via a random number generator on the comments. So which order you are in your comments, you'll get a chance to enter. However, do not duplicate the comments because that will disqualify you. The gaming benchmarks, let's put up the graphs for you guys, roll the numbers and the music, and then we'll get back to this card right here. So the RX 6800 is doing a really good job of performing in between an RTX 3070 at $500 and its 6800 XT Big Brother at $650. Though this card right here does carry 16 gigabytes of VRAM, pretty much making it the cheapest 16 gigabytes of VRAM card out on the market at the moment. However, if you're thinking about buying one of these and a 6800 XT, the 6800 XT does carry a bigger cooler weighing in roughly 120 grams more and also has a bigger depth, but it does carry a true two slot cooler. So if you need to mount it into a case for a mini ITX, for example, that will only accept two slots or smaller, then this card is going to fit as opposed to a 6800 XT or bigger cards that won't fit. You've also got the two eight pin connectors for power requirements. At the back, you've got two display port outs, HDMI 2.1 for 4K 120Hz and VRR support. And then there's a USB type C at the back. Now in terms of the aesthetics, you've got the same fans as the 6800 XT with that silver black theme going on with the red ring around the side and a very solid back plate to boot. Though you're probably wondering at this stage, what's with the 6800, who's it for? It is sitting in a bit of a difficult spot in my opinion, where its performance isn't coming in that of a 6800 XT. And what we're gonna do is pull up World of Warcraft where I did benchmark this, but I'm gonna show you guys the live results here where we've got the 3060 Ti, the 3070, and then the 6800. This is on the max 10 settings at 4K, which all these three cards are capable of giving a very smooth experience in this game, even on max detail. Now this is with ray tracing off, and I have taken a look at ray tracing on this game and it does tank performance a lot for what I feel is not that good of a visual improvement. Though you may notice that I've also included smart access memory, which AMD is offering on their 6800 at the moment, as well as their 6800 XT and their upcoming 6900 XT, where all you have to do to enable this is go into your BIOS, 
change two settings, then you will be getting extra FPS. However, one cool thing and also one not so cool thing about the 6800 is we'll get the cool thing out of the way and that is at like literally and metaphorically too. That is the undervolting where we're able to undervolt this card very easily where I can pull up my settings here on the screen for you guys and it did a tremendous job and you're going to be saving like 60 watts and losing one FPS and this in turn will keep the card cooler and the temperatures down and also the noise down as well. However, on the flip side of things, if you want to overclock the 6800 to say try and get closer to 6800 XT performance, you're going to be out of luck unfortunately where this is VBIOS limited in its 1025 millivolt where even out of the box the 6800 XT will have a higher millivoltage and essentially a higher clock speed. So I couldn't really get much in terms of overclocks out of the 6800 unfortunately, but the, that being said, if you wanna overclock it a little bit, then you can get a bit more performance. And the good thing about that is you won't be using up a whole lot more power either. So conclusion time. We're gonna be summing up the 6800 because I feel like it's now in the same spot as the RTX 3070 where I feel like these two cards here are in that category where they're not offering as good value for money as the cards beside it. And I'm talking about the 3060 Ti against the 3070 where you can also overclock this and it does amazingly well for overclocking. And then you've got the 6800 XT on AMD side for that $70 more, it's gonna give you more. And I feel like if you're going for that high-end play, that extra $70 on AMD side is very well justified and then if we move over to um, the RTX 3070 side, it's the same thing. We've got the RTX 3080, which offers that different league of performance. And then we've got the 3060 Ti, which offers better value. So I'm gonna say like these two cards right here in my hand, they're in difficult spots right now where I feel like, yeah, sure, they're good cards in their own right. And they're better than anything the previous generations have had to offer at this price point. But I feel like they're being a little bit overshadowed by what's beside them on both sides of the fence. The one thing I have noticed in particular with the 3070 versus the 3080 especially is that these are coming into stock. So if you're desperate to get a gaming PC together for Christmas or you just wanna play games in the near future, these cards, and I gotta stress this before I get on out of here, both these cards are going to give you a phenomenal gaming experience. But I guess when you come down to a tech enthusiast level, there are those nitpicks which we spoke about just before. So there's that. If you're after a card, these cards, if they're in stock, they're gonna be good, but they're not gonna be the best buys in my opinion. They're gonna be solid, but they're not gonna be the best buys in terms of what's out there. Hope that has satisfied your GPU demands, especially since someone can get their lucky hands on one of these and you don't even have to pay for it. How lucky is that? But do let us know in the comment section below what you think of the RX 6800. Love reading those thoughts and opinions as always, just like this question of the day here, which comes from Concept Soup. And they ask, maybe do a comparison, $600 versus $600, where one has aesthetic focus, the other performance. Then see how quickly each of them sells. And this question, I haven't seen a question like this for in a while. Fantastic request for a video idea. And in fact, we did a video pretty similar to this, where in the past I've done experiments selling PCs. And that's when I caught onto the RGB craze a couple of years ago. And that's when it sort of, it was coming in then. But now it's, I feel, I'm gonna do this test, but I feel now it's gone to the critical realm where RGB is more important than actually what's inside the PC. That's how bad it is now. So this experiment that we're gonna be doing I feel is gonna show and it's gonna unearth some very uh, horrible truths, if that's anything to go by. But we'll wait for the video, but thanks for the question and thanks for the idea too. We'll get back onto that. It definitely needs to be done. I feel like people are now just buying PCs for RGB more than ever. And I feel like the true tech enthusiast who actually wouldn't build a pre-built anyway or wouldn't buy a PC, they're going for price performance and they're also building it themselves. So they're essentially not even a potential customer. So in ways it kind of does make sense, but we'll make the video, we'll make it happen. We'll see what comes about. And also don't forget to bang that sub button if you haven't already on the way out. Ring that bell to get the content as soon as it drops here at Tech City. And I will see you in the next one very soon. Peace out for now. Bye.